Way too much potential, way too little time, way too much to get into. Racing home, cause I miss you. Facing all the fundamentals, I got way too many foes, way too many lows. Know they come and go, patience when they don't, even if I'm broke. I'm unashamed. I hate to say it, but I ain't afraid of much. Hey girl, hey, it's your girl Candace, and I'm here today to take this oversized blazer that I picked up for $8.99 from the Goodwill and turn it into something that I'm just a little bit happy to wear. So on the right, I have the finished blazer. On the left, I have the original. As you can see, there's not much difference, but there is a bunch of difference. Took out some extra fabric in the sleeves as well as around the waist. I tried mine on in the mirror before this video to kind of figure out how much I wanted to take away, and you should probably do the same. So we're going to get right into this thing by starting off with what supplies we need. You're going to need all your supplies for your sewing machine, cutting your fabric, deconstructing it, putting it back together. I took the jacket and it, I'm starting to examine the inside. This is not a fully lined blazer, which makes this process a lot easier. Um, you can just take the lining out if you do have a fully lined blazer. I'm going to focus on taking my excess fabric from the back just because of the pocket, the lapels, everything in the front. There's a lot going on. I don't really want to mess with it. So I'm going to go into the front and I am going to take out about a half an inch on each side um, right above the pocket. I'm going to blend all of my old seams into all of my new seams. So pretty much start from zero or that old seam, blend it out to how much I want to take out, blend it back down to zero. You can go straight down with your seam and take in or take out as much as you need, but I do find that this makes the process a lot longer. So I'm going to pin on the inside of this front to make sure that I'm on the right seam as well as get an idea of how much fabric I'm taking out. Again, you can see blend from nothing, take out your half an inch, blend back down to nothing. This will help to make this process all look flawless. I'm going to do the same thing above the back vent and then I'm going to take out a little bit more liberally on the sides. You can take out as much or as little as you like, but measure from your old seam that's originally there down here I'm doing a half an inch um, on the center back which all will be about three inches that I've taken out so far and again blend from the old seam pinning it here all the way to where I want the new seam to take out on the back sides I'm going to take out an inch more so that's going to be a total of five inches all the way around that I took out around the waist I like to pin on my seams first, as you know, and then sew, so I'm going to move on to the sleeves. Because of all of the batting and interfacing and shoulder pads, I don't really want to mess with this actual shoulder. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go down through the wrist, and I'm going to remove the lining that's there with my seam ripper, and I'm going to just pull it all back and... Open. I did open up this bottom cuff. I didn't show it, but I did open that to make the seam really, really, really flawless. And I took off about an inch and a half um, from each side, which means it's doubled. So it would have been about three inches from the sleeves. Press, 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 press. Press it nice and clean, press it nice and fresh. Yes, girl, remember to press. You should remove those old seams, those original seams first. <laughs> I didn't, but again, I'm lazy 1.0, um, the original. So, But I am going to go in here and make sure that I press down. I'm also kind of a little lax on this because it's really going into my suitcase. But I'm going to re-tack down all of the linings by using that single catch stitch that I taught you in the previous video about tailoring pants. Again, you're going to make sure that you use a single thread to pick up a single floating thread on the back of the fabric. This minimizes the puckering This by not pulling too tight. This minimizes it showing from the front. This is virtually an invisible seam. It should be if done right. Make sure that you're sewing flat as possible. It's kind of hard for me to do this on camera, but so as flat as possible to ensure that your seam looks amazing from the front. I'm just following into the holes that were there from the previous holes I took out when I um, ripped the seam. And as you can see, it's virtually undetectable. Now moving on into the sleeves, reattaching them. I'm not going to lie, I did not 
take down the lining like I did the outer part of this fabric. I don't really know why I didn't, but I didn't. So I'm going to go in and the extra fabric from my lining, I'm going to create a pleat at the vent of the sleeve. This is just going to make sure that I, um, it kind of all the sleeve lays in the right area. It does make it bulkier by not taking down the lining, but I'm planning on wearing this for fall as well as for um, a layering piece. So I'm okay with the extra fabric if it means I'll be warm. Be sure to pin your sleeve all the way around. Make sure there's no twisting by sticking your hand through the sleeve all the way to the other end to ensure that you haven't sewn the lining in incorrectly. I'm tacking it down the pleat and then I'm going to go around with that same catch stitch. And that's it. Voila. I wanted that oversized look and I didn't want this to lose too much of its body and shape. So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, peace. Hold it down. Mm. Long time, long time. Hold it down. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it down. Yeah. Long time, long time. Hold it down. Yeah.